dear student in this presentation we talk about the structure analysis of a problem structure analysis is basically a development method which allows the analyst to logically understand this system and the corresponding activities it's a systematic approach that uses a graphical tools to analyze and refine the objective of existing system uh, to develop a new system specification that a user can easily understand okay so it will give a equivalent system for the user to understand so it has some inputs for example it's a graphics that specify the presentation of a system it divides the process to give a clear idea of the system flows it's logical rather physical the system do not depends on any software or hardware it is an approach that works from high level overviews to low level so here in in the in this diagram we have shown that structure analysis tools so here the data flow diagram the data dictionary decision tree decision table structured in list and pseudo port so these are all structured analysis tools we start with the data flow diagram or bubble chart data flow diagram or dfd is basically a graphical representation of data flow in an information system it's basically depicts the incoming data flow and outgoing data flow and between incoming and outgoing whatever data is stored within the system data flow diagram does not mention anything about the data how the data flow through the system it does not depends on the algorithm of data flow okay there is a difference between data flow diagram and flow chart the flow chart depicts the flow of the control in the program module where data flow diagrams represent flow of data in the system at various levels the data flow diagram does not contain any control or branch element so two types of data flow diagrams are there one is logical another is the physical so the physical dfd or physical data flow diagram shows how system implements data flow okay so it shows the function that are performed for implementing data flow and it provides low level details of the software and hardware file etc only it engaged in the implementation of data flow logical data flow diagram concentrate on the system process so how the system works and data flow in the system so it actually also a part of the physical data flow diagram and it is nothing but an extension okay so it is implementation depend independent so how the system implements data flow the logical dfd does not bother with that it explain the events of the system and data required by each event for example the data moves between two entries in a bank software system okay 
so when uh, we go for any online shopping so customer usually order from the softwares or apps for say example amazon so there we just search some product and give the order and definitely the after some days the delivery person come and give the order to us so that is a two way system so this is logical dft data dictionary is a centralized collection of information about data it stores the meaning and origin of the data its relationship with other data date data format for uses etc so data dictionary actually it's improve the communication between the analyst and the user it plays a essential role in the building a database the most database management systems have a dictionary data dictionary as a standard feature say in case of library so the data database management system there they includes the isbn number title of the book isbn number of the book subject area and author name okay so here in this table we we have shown the isbn that is describe the isbn number so number of characters required is a 10 title so for title we fix uh, 60 character sub is a book subject so we fix that 80 characters and a name that is author name that we fix up 15 characters okay so this many uh, database this is a database management system this include all this data and uh, it is actually what is the purpose of this database management system is actually finding the uh, book okay and it's all the descriptions that who, who has written the book and in which area that book is particular belongs and the, what are the author's name and the ISBN number okay these are all things are there in this library type database management system and this is called a data dictionary now decision tree so decision tree is a diagram that show the alternative action and condition within a horizontal tree framework so it depicts condition to consider first second and so on decision tree depicts the relationship between each condition and their permissible action the square note indicates the action and the circle indicates the condition it the analyst assess the sequence of decision and identifies the actual decision can be made here okay so major limitation of this decision tree is that so more information is required to describe what the other combination of condition can be taken for testing decision tables represent condition and individual actions to be taken to address them in a structured tabular form decision tables useful in situation where the resulting action depends on occurrence of one or several combination of independent conditions components of decision tables are basically four such component exist the condition stuff is the upper left quadrant that lists all condition to be checked action stuff is a lower left quadrant that outlines 
the actions to be carried out to meet such a condition. The conditional entry is a the upper right quadrant, so which answers the question asked in the conditional stop quadrant. Now action entry is a lower right quadrant which indicates the appropriate result result appropriate action resulting from the answer to be answer to the conditions in the condition entry quadrants so why shows the existence of a condition n represent the condition which is not satisfied the bank it uh, states to be ignored and this cross state that it has to be carried out say if you if you were uh, say one shopkeeper and uh, one particular customer goes to you and he choose a particular product and give some advance payment suppose that product is not available and you take the order and give the advance payment then whatever the purchase amount and whether the customer is a regular or not so we don't bother about we will give a 5% discount to the customer okay because he has given some advance payment and the customer has a faith on the shopkeeper so that's why only we, we, we can give this 5% discount to him as a reward okay now advance payment made in this rule 2 the advance payment made is in that is not given any advance payment purchase amount is why uh, 10,000 so the purchase amount is given he's a regular customer okay so the regular customer he went to your, your shop and paid the purchase amount and he's a regular customer so you can give this a discount 5% discount so it's a rule now Rule number three, no advance payment is done. The purchase amount is 10,000 and he is given. So that person is not a regular customer. So it is up to you. You can give discount or you cannot give any discount. So you can fix a rule certain that. So you do not give any discount. Okay. Now, advance payment made, no, no advance payment is given, purchase amount is 10,000, that is also not paid, so there is no question of uh, discount, giving discount or not giving any discount, so you suddenly will not sell your product, okay. So the next one is a structured English, it is derived from the structured programming language and that gives a more understanding and the PCI's process description. It is basically based on the procedural logic that uses instruction and imperative sentences designed to act. It is based when a sequence and loops in the program must be considered the problem needs a sequence of action with decision it doesn't have a strict syntax rule it expresses all the logic in terms of sequential decision structure and iteration just give this example if customer pays as once so this is a structured english customer pays at once then give five percent discount if purchase amount greater than 10,000, greater than equal to 10,000, then the then if the customer is a regular 
customer is a regular customer then give 5% discount else no discount okay so purchase amount is greater than 10,000 then you have two options if it is a regular customer you give 5% discount otherwise no discount and if else no discount okay that is if the discount amount is this under this statement we have this discount issue and in if no discount okay so purchase amount is less than something then you give no discount less than this one so no discount is given now pseudo code so pseudo code does not perform to any programming language and express logic in plain english it may specify physical programming logic without coding during or after the physical design it is used in conjunction with structure programming and replaces a flowchart of a pro program 